Back in the mid-2010s, a group of researchers at the Tama Zoological Park in Tokyo spent over 250 hours watching wolves yawning. Their research, they argued, indicated that wolves and other large carnivores are capable of empathy. In more recent years, however, their results, and more specifically the conclusions they drew from them, have come into question a little bit. In part because we still don't actually understand why it is that we yawn. This is going to be one of those videos where there's probably more questions than answers, but welcome back to the Dark Wolf Project. So let's start with the basics. We know what yawning is, but why do we do it? At the time of recording, there is no one conclusive explanation. However, the main theories are that it's an involuntary stimulus to keep us awake, or perhaps a physiological function to provide more oxygen to the brain, or even to equalize pressure in the inner ear. It also has the strange capability of being contagious. If you've ever noticed, somebody who catches a yawn from somebody else isn't actually responding to the same stimuli as the yawner. They're actually yawning in response to stimuli that they're not experiencing themselves. So this may be key to understanding other animals' social and emotional capabilities because demonstrating empathy shows that an animal has the ability to understand and experience the emotions of another. Now this video isn't going to be very animal rights heavy just to avoid complexity, but just for a moment, imagine the implications of empathetic wolves. There's going to be a lot of real severe ethical dilemmas if we find out that trapping a wolf can not only cause emotional harm to that animal, but also to the other members of its pack. And that's not even getting into things such as lethal removal. Now, up until the study was conducted, there had been a number of attempts to establish a scientific evidence for an emotional bond between dogs and their owners, but nothing to do with captive or wild wolf populations. Observing empathy in captive wolves would actually demonstrate that since wolves and dogs are very closely related, the emotional bond is not actually something created by humans, but is innate to that species. To put it simply, wolves may be as capable of sharing and experiencing the emotions of other pack members as we are of understanding the emotions of our close friends and family. And this theory is exactly what the researchers in Tokyo set out to try and prove. So this study kind of went something like you might imagine. The researchers had a pack of 12 captive wolves. Importantly in this case, it was a family unit and not wolves from different packs that had been brought together. The relevance of this is that, without going off on too much of a tangent, captive wolves behave very differently when they're from different uh, parents. If they're all from the same family, the same offspring of a breeding pair that is, then they're going to behave a little more closely to how a natural pack does in the wild. Therefore, the researchers' results aren't going to be hampered by behaviour that arises from mostly unnatural circumstance of different wolves being brought together. So, basically, the team of scientists monitored wolves in this pack for over 250 hours and took video evidence, or uh, at least photographic evidence, of occasions when the animals demonstrated contagious yawning. Hopefully I can bring up one on screen here. They set out some pretty specific circumstances for what qualifies as a contagious yawn, just to be safe. So for example, if the viewer was yawning before the wolves did, then this would be counted as an outside stimuli. In addition, the wolves also had to be demonstrating that they were in a very relaxed state prior to it, so that no other pack behaviour could have been playing a part. Now, the results, when they got them, not only showed that wolves are indeed susceptible to contagious yawning, 
was also that the estimated strength of the bond between different members of the pack alters the time it takes for a yawn to become contagious. Wolves who had a perceived stronger family bond were a lot more susceptible to contagious yawning quicker. The problem is though that nobody is quite certain what the results mean. There's currently two different hypotheses on why yawning in mammals is contagious, and these have pretty different implications on how we may view the wolf and any other animals that exhibit possibly empathetic behaviour as a result. So these two hypotheses as to why yawning is contagious are that it is an empathetic response as we've been discussing, or that it is a physiological one. Now the researchers were aware of both of these different hypotheses, and perhaps because of this, they decided that their results could support either of them. In fact, they decided that their results could easily support both of them at the same time. They reckoned that yawning contagiously could serve as a physiological cue for the animals to be able to transition between different states of activity, and that this was transferred between different animals in the pack via an empathetic bond. Since wolves are extremely social animals, then this kind of makes sense, that they would be using empathy as an evolutionary trait, since it allows them to synchronise their activities and perform better at pack activities, such as hunting for example. Unfortunately for us, we're still not 100% certain, or we're probably not even 60% certain, as to which of these is correct. It could be an empathetic or physiological response, or it could be both. For example, other teams have since managed to recreate this study with humans and domestic dogs, as has been documented previously. They found, however, this time, that changing the owner for somebody that the dog didn't have an emotional bond to, changing out the owner for somebody that the dog didn't have an emotional bond with, didn't make them any less susceptible to yawning contagiously. These researchers use this to argue that there is no real concrete evidence for empathy in other animals. As of right now though, it's still very much an open discussion. From a personal perspective, if wolves have been capable, or indeed if any other animals have been capable of developing empathy to be able to better aid them at surviving in their natural habitats, then it only makes sense that they would keep this trait and use it to their advantage. I think it's far too early for us to rule out the possibility of this evolving or having already evolved, but I guess we'll have to wait until there's some new research published to get a better understanding of it. So that's really where we are with this topic. As always, if you have any views on this or maybe some other information that I've missed out, then let us know down in the comments. This has been a bit of a late video coming. Uh, I do apologise for that, but those of you who do follow me closely know that the YouTube side of things is only a small part of the Dark Wolf project. The rest of it is raising funds for wolf conservation and helping educate people. If you'd like to help out with this, then maybe consider heading over to my shop at projectdarkwolf.org. You can find the artwork that I've done for the longer episodes there, and any purchases you make will go directly towards helping wolf conservation and recovery efforts in the US and in Europe. Also, check out the project on social media because you can get updates about everything that's upcoming there. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to maybe like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. I'll see you in the next video, hopefully a little bit sooner. Until then, Dark Wolf out.